welcome to Galant IAS. Today we are discussing the topic phytochrome. Okay. Phytochrome. So actually this phytochrome which comes under the unit 4 of paper 2. Okay. Which comes under unit 4 of paper Okay. And this phytochrome is an important topic from this unit. So you can see in the screen that many times the questions which has been asked from the phytochrome region. Have a look on to the previous questions. Okay. This phytochrome induced responses in flowering plant. Okay. How do they control flowering? So here the question having two parts. The first part is asking about phytochrome induced responses in flowering plant. So how this phytochrome induces its response in flowering plant that is the first part and second part is how do they control flowering and how this phytochromes control flowering in long day and short day plant. So this is the question. Okay. So other question is how is phytochrome associated with flowering? With illustration describe the structure of phytochrome. Explain the role of phytochrome in flower development process. So this is also the question having two parts. The first part is demanding you to write the structure of phytochrome and the second part explain the role of phytochrome in flowering in uh, phytochrome in flo uh, flower development process. So this is a question and uh, the other question write a short note on phytochrome and what are the characteristics of phytochrome induced responses in flowering of higher plants and how do they control flowering. Okay, so after looking to the question, you get an idea how the question is being framed from this part. Okay, so from phytochrome, you have to know what is phytochrome, right? You have to know what is phytochrome. So actually, this phytochrome is a protein. And second thing you have to be noted from this part is you have to know what is phytochrome, and then you have to know its structure, structure of phytochrome and the third is how this phytochrome, how this phytochrome. So from the previous question it is evident that the most of the questions is asking about how this phytochrome is helped in flowering. Okay. So the other part we have discussed is how phytochrome is associated with, the, how phytochrome is associated with flowering. Okay. So firstly we will discuss what is phytochrome, okay. So I already mentioned that phytochrome is actually a protein, phytochrome is actually a protein, okay. So phytochrome is actually a protein. So the protein present in the leaves, okay, where you can see the phytochromes, there's phytochromes which can be seen on leaves, okay. So phytochrome is a protein and this protein is in on leaves, okay. Okay, this protein on leaves which can absorb light, which can absorb light of different wavelength, okay. So actually this phytochrome is a protein which present on leaves and this protein which can absorb different wavelength, okay, different wavelength of light. And that what we called as phytochrome, okay. So what do you mean by phytochrome? Phytochrome is actually a protein that, uh, that can be seen on the leaves and it can absorb different wavelength of light. And that what we called as the phytochrome. Just look on to the structure of phytochrome, okay. So we have discussed what phytochrome is. While we are looking onto the structure of phytochrome, it's having two identical subunits, okay. And it having two domain first domain and second domain and here you can see that covalently adapt chromato uh, chromatophore group there and the first domain, I already mentioned that it have two domain, the first domain which have the photoreceptor activity, the first domain which having the photoreceptor activity, first domain. So what is the function of first domain? What is the function of first domain? It having the photoreceptor 
activity. First domain which having the photoreceptor activity and the second domain is having the kinase activity. First domain which having the photoreceptor activity and the second domain which have the kinase activity. Types of phytochrom. Okay. So far we have discussed what is phytochrom and the structure. So what do you mean by phytochrome? Phytochrome is actually a protein which is seen on leaves and this phytochromes which are present on the leaves which can absorb different wavelength of light and what we called as the phytochrome, okay. And then we have discussed the structure. It's having first domain and second domain, it have two identical subunits and uh, covalently attached to chromatophore group and they are having two domains, first domain which uh, having the photoreceptor activity and the second domain, what is the function of the second domain, the second domain which have the kinase activity, okay. Next we are discussing it, the different types of phytochromes, okay. Actually there are two forms of phytochromes, two forms of phytochromes are there, okay. Phytochromes, it having two forms, okay. What are the different uh, forms of phytochromes? One is PR, phytochrome red and the other one is PFR, phytochrome far red, okay. Two forms of phytochromes are there, one is PR that means phytochrome red and the other one which is PFR that is phytochrome far red, okay. These two pigments differ in their absorption peak, okay. So I already mentioned that phytochrome having two forms, one is PR and the other one is PFR and both this are differ, both these pigments which are differ in their absorption peak, okay. So there is a difference in the absorption peak, okay. So phytochrome red or PR, phytochrome red, phytochrome red or PR, phytochrome red, okay. So it absorbs maximum light in the red region of the spectrum, okay. So phytochrome red, that means as the name indicate, this absorbs maximum light at the red region of the spectrum and it has the wavelength of 660 nanometer, okay. So here this phytochrome red which have its absorption peak at 660 nanometer, okay. We already mentioned that two pigments are there and these two pigments which is differ in their absorption peak, okay. Phytochrome red which have the absorption peak at 660 nanometer and next is the phytochrome far red, next is the phytochrome far red, P F R. Okay, so here this phytochrome far red, it has the absorption peak in the far red region at 730 nanometer, okay. So here the phytochrome far red which have the absorption peak at 660 nanometer and here the phytochrome far red, the absorption peak is 730 nanometer, okay. So here the light absorbs in the far red region and the absorption peak in PFR is 730 nanometer and in phytochrome red, the absorption peak or it absorbs maximum light at 660 nanometer, okay. And here the PR form, that means here the PR form, far red region which is the inactive form, PR region or phytochrome uh, red which is the inactive form, okay, phytochrome red which is the inactive form. Only PFR is physiologically active. So if PR, phytochrome red is inactive, the only active form is PFR. Okay, so here the PFR is the only active form and PR is inactive form, phytochrome red is inactive form and phytochrome far red is the physiologically active form. On the figure you can see that absorption of phytochrome and phytochrome far red is there. So here the first one which is the PR that is uh, phytochrome red, okay. So here this phytochrome red having its absorption peak at 660 nanometer and here phytochrome far red 
at 730 nanometer okay based on the responses this phyto the interconversion of this phytochrome uh, pr to pfr and pfr to pr which responses in flowering in long day and short day plant so as a responses to this phytochrome in plants it responses with the action of this phytochromes okay that means control of flowering and seed germination that means the flowering in long day and short day plants is by the action of this phytochromes so we will discuss how this phytochromes helps in flowering in long day and short day plants in the conversion of phytochromes two types of pigments are interconvertible okay we already discussed that the phytochrome phytochrome which having two forms one is the phytochrome red and other one is phytochrome far red okay so these two forms are interconvertible that means uh, pr to pfr is possible and from pfr to pr is possible that is the meaning of interconvertible okay two types of pigments are interconvertible that means pr can be converted into pfr form and again that pfr form can be converted back to pr form first one is the photo conversion okay a phytochrome red absorbs phytochrome or the pr absorbs red light it is converted into pfr okay so consider that pr pr which absorbs red light so here what is the nanometer of red light is 660 nanometer with the presence of light this pr which shows the absorption peak at 660 nanometer absorbs red light and it is converted into pfr okay so when pr absorbs red light pr absorbs red light it is converted into pfr similarly when pfr so one thing is that pr absorbs red light and is converted into pfr so similarly pfr absorbs far red light and converted to pr form okay so pfr absorbs far red light that means it absorbs far red light at 730 nanometer and it is converted into pr that is the meaning of interconvertible pr can be convertible into pfr and pfr can be convertible into pr form okay and this conversion is called as photo conversion why it is called as a photo conversion because it is depend upon the light okay that is why it is called as photo conversion okay so this pr absorbs red light and it can be converted into pfr form similarly pfr absorbs far red light and converted back to pr form hope it's clear okay photo conversion is very rapid it is completed within 1 to 4 minutes okay so when we comparing the photo conversion with the thermal conversion this photo conversion is a rapid process and this photo conversion is completed within 1 to 4 minutes okay so this photo conversion that means the conversion of pr to pfr when absorbs red light and similarly pfr absorbs far red light and converted back to pr okay this is called the photo conversion and this photo conversion is a rapid process and it is been completed within 1 to 4 minutes so next is the thermal conversion okay pfr spontaneously converted into pr in the dark okay pfr spontaneously converted into pr in dark pfr spontaneously converted into pr in the dark this method of conversion is very slow it takes a few hours it depends on temperature that is why it is called as thermal conversion okay so pfr pfr spontaneously converted into pr form okay when there is darkness that means when there is no light okay darkness means darkness means when there is no light when there is no light this pfr has been converted back to pr form okay when there is no light 
this PFR is converted back to PR form when there is no light. That means on darkness, this PFR is converted back to PR form. And this is a slow process. While we are comparing it with the photo conversion, the photo conversion is a rapid process and it takes about one to four minutes and this thermal conversion is a slow process and it takes few hours, okay? And actually it depends on temperature. So it depends upon the temperature. Normally at uh, night, the temperature is low, okay? So that is why it is called as thermal conversion. That is why it is called as thermal conversion. It depends upon temperature and that is why it is called as thermal conversion, okay? And PR does not show thermal conversion, okay? So other thing you have to be noted that at night, PFR is converted back to PR, but this PR is not converted to PFR in darkness, okay? Or in otherwise, we can say that PR form does not show thermal conversion, okay? So this thermal conversion is only possible in PFR form. The thermal conversion is only possible in PFR form, okay? At darkness or when there is no light, this PFR is converted back to PR and it is a slow process and it is completed within a few hours, okay? And this PR does not show thermal conversion. This PR form does not uh, show thermal con conversion, only this PFR form shows the thermal conversion. So next we are discussing about the mechanism of action of phytochrome, okay? Phyto role of phytochrome in short day plants. So how this phytochromes helps in flowering in long day plants and how it uh, helps flowering in short, uh, uh, long day plants, okay? So uh, because of the presence or the conversion of this phytochrome to uh, phytochrome far red, there in plants flowering is possible and also flowering is inhibited by the interconversion of this phytochromes. We will discuss how it is done, okay? So role of phytochrome in short day plants. The short day plants produce flowers in the presence of PR, okay? So here one thing you have to be noted that the short day plants, short day plants, short day plants which produce flowers, okay? So for producing flowers in short day plants, PR form is necessary, okay? For flowering in short day plants, this PR form is necessary, okay? So in short day plants, PR form helps in flowering, okay? For flowering in short day plants, this phytochrome red is essential, okay? So here look, uh, look on to the figure, here you can see that the PR or phytochrome red build up in short day plants, it activated the florigen, okay? So florigen which is a plant hormone and it helps in flowering, okay? In short day plants, PR build ups and it's activated the flowering hormone florigen and as a result, flowering is takes place in short day plants, okay? Okay, the phytochrome PFR accumulates at the end of the light period is short day plants, okay? So here, the phytochrome PFR accumulates at the end of the light period, okay? So in phytochromes, PFR accumulates at the end of the light period in short day plants. At the end of the light period in short day plants, this PFR accumulates at the end of the light period in short day plants, okay? Then the PFR starts a series of reaction and then it inhibits flowering. The phytochrome PF, phytochrome PFR, phytochrome far red accumulates at the end of the light period. So at the end of the light period means during the light period here, the PR, when they absorb light, okay, during the light period. So we already mentioned that PR, when absorbed red light, it is being converted into PFR. Okay, during the daytime or during when, when there is light available, PR is 
we are absorbed red light and it is been converted into PFR form. Okay, so at the end of the light period, so during, so whenever there is light, the PR is converted into PFR form. Okay, so during the end of the light period, end of the light period in short day plants, here PFR is accumulated, PFR is accumulated there. Okay, during the end of the light period, PFR accumulates in short day plants. And this PFR undergoes a series of reaction. This PFR undergoes a re, uh, series of reaction and finally it inhibits flowering. Okay. There are two methods of conversion of this PFR to PR. Okay. So we already mentioned that in short day plants, in short day plants for flowering, phytochrome red is essential. Right, we already mentioned that for short day plants, for flowering in short day plants, this phytochrome red is essential because this phytochrome red is activating the fluoregen and that fluoregen will help in flowering in short, uh, short day plants, okay. So, at the end of the light period in short day plants, PFR, PFR is accumulated there. So, if PFR is accumulated there, the flowering is not possible in short day plants. Why it is not possible? For flowering in short day plants, the phytochrome red is necessary or phytochrome red is essential for flowering in short day plants. So here at the end of the light period here PFR has been accumulated there. So normally flowering is not possible in short day plants. If PFR has been accumulated there. Okay, so there are two methods of conversion of PFR to PR. So, to flower or for flowering in short day plants, this PFR has been converted back to PR form. Then only the flowering is possible in short day plants. Okay, so mainly there are two methods are there. One is PFR undergoes thermal conversion in dark. Okay, so one we have already discussed that PFR, only the PFR can undergo thermal con conversion, okay. So under, so during darkness or uh, when there is no light, this PFR can convert it back to PR form, okay. So that is called as a thermal conversion, okay. So why this PFR undergoes thermal conversion? So if uh, PFR undergoes thermal conversion, it has been converted back to PR. So that means PR build up and flowering is possible in short day plants, okay. That means here in short day plants, darkness or the non-availability of light is important for flowering, okay. Short day plants mean here the day length is comparatively less when it compares to night, okay. So PFR is slowly converted into PR from when eight and a half or more dark period is given for a critical time period for flowering in short day plants, okay, this is important. For flowering in short day plants, this time period is important. There is a eight and a half hours of darkness is there, this PFR, the PFR which builds at the end of the light period is being converted back to PR form if there is eight and a half hours or more darkness. That means for flowering in short day plants, eight and a half hours of darkness is necessary, okay. Eight and a half hours or more darkness, uh, dark period is necessary for flowering in short day plants, okay. PFR is slowly converted into PR when eight and a half hours or more dark period is given. Now, if eight and a half hours or more dark period is given, this whatever PFR is being accumulated at the end of the light period is being converted back to PR. So here PFR is disappeared, okay. Hope it's all clear for you, okay. So when eight and a half hours or more darkness is being given, 
whatever PFR builds up at the end of the light period is being converted back to PR form and then this PR activated the flowering hormone flow region and flowering is possible in short day plants. Okay. So PFR is disappeared. So if PFR is been disappeared, its inhibition also lost there. Therefore, the plant flowers. Conversion of PFR to PR is not completed if dark period is less than eight, uh, eight and a half hours. This is also important. Okay. For the completion, for the complete conversion of PFR to PR. Okay. So PR is necessary for short day plants in flowering. This PR is necessary for short day plants. For what, why this is necessary? It is necessary for flowering in short day plants. Okay, it is necessary for flowering in short day plants. Okay, so if PFR is being converted to PR, that helps the flowering in short day plants. Okay, and one more thing is important that if therefore the plant flowers and conversion of PFR to PR is not completed. Okay, so the PFR, we already mentioned that at the end of the light period, PFR accumulates there. Okay, so whatever PFR accumulates there is being converted back to PR for flowering in short day plants. Okay, so for the completion of this PFR back to PR form, minimum of eight and a half hour is necessary. If the darkness is less than eight and a half hours, the conversion of PFR to PR is not completed. Therefore, PFR, the presence of PFR is there and it inhibits flowering in short day plants. Okay. So, PFR to PR is not completed if dark is less than eight and a half hour and the plant fails to flower. Hope it's clear. Okay. So, there are two methods of conversion is there. There are two methods of conversion of PFR to PR. One is the thermal conversion. Okay. One is the thermal conversion. One is thermal conversion. Okay. So, we have already mentioned what is thermal conversion and this thermal conversion it is only possible in PFR form and this thermal conversion is not possible in PR form. In PR form, the thermal conversion is not possible. The thermal conversion is not possible. Okay. So, PFR undergoes thermal conversion in dark. Therefore, PFR is slowly converted back to PR when there is eight and a half, eight and a half or more dark period is given. Okay. Eight and a half hours or more or more dark period is given. Whatever PFR accumulates at the end of the light period is converted back to PR. Okay. So, here for flowering in short day plants, eight and a half, minimum of eight and a half hours or more darkness is necessary for flowering in short day plants. It is important. Okay. So, if more dark period is there, eight and a half and more dark period is there, whatever PFI accumulated at the end of the light period is being converted back to PR and this PFR is disappeared and if PFR is disappeared, this plant will flowers. If PFR is uh, disappeared, it loses inhibition and the short day plants will flower. That means PR is, been, uh, PR is there and this PR will activate the flowering hormone flow region and it flowers in short day plants and therefore the plant flowers. And conversion of PFR to PR is not completed. Okay. So, if, there, if the dark period is less than eight and a half hours, PF, the conversion of PFR to PR is not completed. So, short day plants will not flower. Okay. Hope it's all clear for you. Okay. So, we have discussed the thermal conversion. Okay. So, two forms are there. One is the thermal conversion and uh, during the thermal conversion, PFR is converted to PR if there is eight and a half or mock darkness is given. If there is eight and a half or more darkness is given, PFR is converted back to PR. So this PR activated, PRV activated flow region 
and helps in flowering in short day plants short day plants okay so next is the photo conversion photo conversion is also possible when the dark period is interrupted by a brief flash of red light in the middle okay so one is the thermal conversion there are two ways for the conversion of pfr to pr one is the thermal conversion and that we have already discussed next is the photo conversion okay when the dark period is interrupted by a brief flash of red light in the middle whatever pr is produces is converted back to pfr okay so another thing is that during the dark period okay during the dark period a brief flash of red light in the middle okay so during the dark period pfr is converted to pr okay pfr is been converted to pr during the night okay or when there is darkness whatever pfr is there it is been converted back to pr okay so during this darkness a short splash of red light is given this pr absorbs the red light and again it converted back to pfr okay so during the dark, uh, dark time or the dark, uh, dark period if it's given a red splash of light it again inhibit flowering why this happens if a um, flash of red light is given whatever pfr is been converted to pr is again converted back to pfr this why is that this pr can absorb this red light and again it converted back to pfr and this is photo conversion that means it uh, is a rapid process and it is completed within 1 to 4 minutes okay so hence red light inhibit flowering okay so one thing also noted that red light inhibits flowering in short day plants okay red light inhibits flowering in short day plants if red light is followed by far red okay so if red light is followed by far red okay pfr is again converted into pr so red light is followed by pfr okay after the red light far red light is given okay so uh, uh, pfr that means far red at 730 nanometer this pfr is converted back to pr okay so after the red light a far red light is followed whatever pfr is been there it is been converted to pr form okay hence this pfr or far red light will helps in flowering and the red light will inhibit flowering hope you get the concept of a concept of the interconversion of pr and pfr okay we have discussed the role of phytochrome in short day plants next we are looking on the role of phytochrome in long day plants okay role of phytochromes in long day plants okay from the previous figure we can say that for long day plants pfr pfr is necessary for flowering in long day plants so this pfr activated floregen and it helps flowering in it helps flowering in long day plants okay so long day plants produce flower in the presence of pfr okay so long day plants will produce flowers in the presence of pfr pfr also accumulates at the end of the light period in long day plants okay so in long day plants pfr pfr accumulates at the end of the light period in long day plants okay pfr also accumulate at the end of the light period in long day plants pfr starts a series of reaction it finally produces flower pfr causes flowering in long day plants so that we already know that we have discussed from the previous slide this for flowering in long day plants pfr is necessary there 
okay this pfr will activate the fluorogen in long day plants and it helps flowering similarly in short day plants pr is necessary for flowering and that pr will activate the fluorogen and that fluorogen which is necessary for flowering in short day plants okay for long day plants pfr is necessary for flowering okay okay long day plants pfr is necessary long day plants pfr is necessary for flowering okay long day plants okay that means here the light period light period is high and dark dark period is comparatively low for okay, long day plants means here the light period is long and the darkness is comparatively short and for flowering in long day plants pfr is necessary for flowering in long day plants okay we already uh, discussed that pfr helps in flowering pfr helps in flowering in long day plants okay so what happens if the pfr is converted to pr flowering is not possible in long day plants okay if this pfr is converted to pr form if the pfr is converted to pr form flowering is not possible flowering is not possible flowering is not possible in long day plants okay if pfr has been converted back to pr flowering is not possible in long day plants so thus pfr should not be allowed to come into pr okay so if pfr is been converted to pr what happens it inhibits the flowering in long day plants pr inhibits flowering in long day plants pfr can convert into pr in dark therefore plants should be given less darkness than critical time we already discussed that during the night time pfr can converted back to pr that is what we called as the thermal conversion that is what we called as the thermal conversion okay so during night whatever pfr is been there if there is a minimum of dark period is given there the pfr is been converted back to pr okay so therefore plants should be given less darkness than critical time okay so hyposcamous plant this hyposcamous plant which is a long day plant is exposed to 10 and half hours of light and 13 and half hours of dark okay conversion of pfr to pr is not completed in the dark okay so hyposcamous plant is a long day plants and so for uh, for not converting the pfr to pr here plant should be given darkness less than critical time so hyposcamous plant is ex exposed to 10 and a half hours of light and 13 and half hours of dark conversion of pr to pf sorry conversion of pfr to pr is not completed in dark so the plant flowers if the dark period is more then pfr disappears that means if the dark period is higher that means the critical point is or the critical period which is 13 and half hours of dark okay so if the uh, dark, dark period is more than 13 and half hours of dark okay if the dark period is higher than the critical point that means if the darkness is more than 13 and half hours of darkness is there pfr is converted to pr and this darkness or this uh, darkness helps in the conversion of pfr to pr so if the pfr is been converted to pr it inhibits flowering in long day plants okay so if the dark period is more that means if the dark period is greater than 13 and a half hours of dark is there the pfr is converted back to pr and it inhibits flowering in long day plants so if the dark period is more pfr disappears therefore pr is been accumulated there and if pr is accumulated in long day plants what happens it inhibit flowering in 
long day plans. If a flash of red light is given, okay, if a flash of red light is given during this uh, dark uh, conversion of PFR to PR, this PR absorbs red light and again converted into PFR. Thus, PFR is restored, hence red light causes flowering, okay. Hence, red light causes flowering in long day plants, okay. Remember one thing that this red light will cause flowering in long day, red light, red light will helps in flowering in long day plants, while as in short day plants, this red light inhibit in short day plants, red light inhibit flowering, red light inhibit flowering, okay. So, if the dark period is more, that means if the dark period is more than 13 and half hours of darkness is given there, whatever PFR is been there, it is converted to PR and this PR will inhibit the flowering in long day plants, okay. And uh, again the other one, if PFR is converted to PR, that means if there is more darkness, that means it mo there is more darkness than the critical time, that is more darkness, that is 13 and a half hours or more darkness is there, PFR is converted back to PR, okay. During that uh, conversion time, a splash of red light is given, this PR will absorb the red light at the absorption peak at 660 nanometer and this PR is converted back to PFR, okay. So here the PFR is restored and this helps in flowering. So in long day plants, this flash of red light helps in flowering and in short day plants, this red light inhibit flowering. Hope that you get the con uh, concept of this phytochromes and how this phytochromes help in flowering in short day and long day plants. So look on to the figure. So red light, PFR and PR is there. PR, absorb the red light. So PR, 660 nanometer is being converted to PFR and PFR at 730 nanometer is converted to PR, okay. And uh, PR build up, so for the flowering in short day plants, PR is important, okay. So for the flowering in short day plants, this PR build up and in short day plants it activated the flow region and flowering is, happens in short day plants. Likewise, PFR builds up in long day plants and this PFR is necessary for flower activated flow region and this flow region is important for flowering, okay. So this PFR is there, this PFR builds up during long day, uh, PFR builds up in uh, long day plants and this PFR, uh, PFR will activate flow region and it helps in flowering. This PFR will helps flowering in long day plants, okay. And the other thing we have discussed is the structure. Uh, the, while we are looking onto the structure of the phytochrom, it having two identical uh, chromatophores and covalently at, attached to chromatophore group there and it having two domain, first domain which having the photoreceptor, photoreceptor activity, okay, first domain which having the photoreceptor activity and the second domain which having the kinase activity, okay. Okay, so we have discussed that in uh, short day plants, this PR is necessary for flowering in short day plants, okay. And if for long day plants, PFR is necessary for flowering in long day plants. And this red light will inhibit flowering in short day plants and the red light will helps in flowering in long day plants. Hope the concept is clear for you for the detailed class related phytochrome please visit our website. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.